All right, so for our next example, we're looking at a fairly simple curve, parabola. And we want to look at what happens when you revolve about the x-axis and then about the y-axis. So we're just doing the segment from, from 0 to 1. All right. So we have this uh, badly drawn surface here. Okay. So we're revolving around this way. And so when we're doing the setup, and I probably should have drawn this a little bit bigger so we can kind of see, but um, we're going about the x-axis. So the radius is going to be x squared. We could also do it as y, right? And for the arc length, okay, the ds bit, right? Well, we can choose two ways to do this, right? Um, we can say, so f prime of x is is 2x and so we can write it as 1 plus 2x squared times dx. Um, now your other option here is is you could say that x is the square root of y so dx is 1 over 2 root y times dy. So another way to write ds is you could write ds as the square root of, so if we square that, we get 1 over 4y plus 1, and then we integrate with respect to y. And maybe we want to clean that up a little bit and write that as 1 plus 4y over root 4y. We could get a common denominator and write it like that. Okay, so now we proceed. And we have to choose which setup we want to do. So if we, if we do it with respect to x, well, what do we get? Area is going to be the integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi. So it's always, remember, the area always, however you set it up, is going to be integral from some limits, 2 pi r ds, right? And you have to decide whether r and ds should be expressed in terms of x or y. So if we express in terms of x, right, well then the radius is x squared. ds becomes 1 plus 4 x squared dx. And then we proceed to evaluate the integral. Uh, again, there's kind of two choices for the, we, we can either do, we can either do x is 1 half tan theta, dx would be 1 half secant squared theta, d theta. Um, if we, if we do that one, we're going to get the integral from 0 2 pi over 4, uh, 2 pi times 1 quarter tan squared theta. Uh, this is going to become 1 half of, so this, if I put that in, I'm going to get 1 plus secant, or sorry, 1 plus tan squared, which becomes secant squared, take the square root. We have secant theta, and then we get um, two more from there, so actually 1 half times another 1 half times secant cubed theta d theta. Well, this is not going to be nice, right? Um, this is going to be pi over 8 integral from 0 to pi over 4 tan squared times secant cubed. Um, we've come across that one, right? The only way to deal with tan squared times secant cubed is to write tan squared as secant squared theta minus 1. That gives us a secant cubed. So we get a secant fifth minus secant cubed. Those are two very unpleasant trig integrals. They're doable. We've done them. But they're not great, right? Um, you could look this up in a table of integrals. You might be able to find it there. Uh, the alternative substitution that you could do um, and again, we're not going to actually evaluate it. We'll just, you know, the goal is to get the setup here. Um, 
the alternative would be to try one half um, sine hyperbolic. Dx will be one half cos hyperbolic. Um, so then you're going to get, instead, you would get the integral. So you still have that 2 pi integral from 0 to sine hyperbolic inverse of 1. That's like log of root 2 plus 1. Okay, um, and then x squared becomes hyperbolic sine squared t. This is going to be hyperbolic cos times another hyperbolic cos, right? And there's a 1 over 4, 1 over 4. Um, so that would be the alternative integral. And aside from the fact that we always forget our hyperbolic identities, that's a little bit easier to deal with because you do a power reduction formula here, power reduction formula there. It's not that bad, okay? The other option you could always do is you could always say, well, what if I tried it with respect to y? Do things get any better? Maybe. Let's have a look. So with respect to y, we get 2 pi. y still goes from 0 to 1, right? So now the radius is just y. Your ds becomes this thing. 1 plus 4y under the square root. On the bottom, we have 2 root y dy. It's actually not that bad. Um, this becomes pi integral from 0 to 1 uh, root y times 1 plus 4y. Oh, I lied. It's still bad, right? Um, dy. And yeah, I don't think life is necessarily any better with that one. We could play around. I don't think you can make life better than substitution, you probably have to pull that in. y plus 4y squared, all under the square root. And, you know, we're not quite sure what to do with that, right? It's worth a try, right? Um, if you don't like the integral you get with respect to x, you can try the integral with respect to y and see if it's any better. And then maybe you change your mind and say, you know what, this one wasn't so bad after all, let's go back and do that. Happens sometimes.